city that knows how to keep its secrets. But one man is still trying to find the answers to life's persistent questions. Guy Noir, Private Eye. It was May and suddenly the weather was warm and beautiful and sunny. Two weeks before we had snow in St. Paul and now I was getting ready for the fishing opener which I was planning to take part in along with a former governor of Minnesota. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. You bring the fish up to the side of the boat and then I'm gonna hit him with a folding chair. Then I'm gonna jump in and get him in a lip lock. Hoo-ya! And then I got a call from down in Nashville and an organization called the Radio Hall of Fame. Yeah, Mr. Noir, it's Pete Peabody down here at the Radio Hall of Fame. Listen, we need some help here. Uh, the Country Music Hall of Fame is an enormous palace with a hotel, an auditorium, and a, well, the Radio Hall of Fame is in an old garage in East Nashville. <laughs> got a collection of cassette tapes and microphones and a collection of shoes of various radio hosts. Uh -huh. Listen, could you come down and help us out? So, I got me a seat on Baptist Airline and I headed for Nashville. Howdy, my name is Lou Ann. I'll be your flight attendant today. Now, in the event of a sudden loss of cabin pressure, please note that we do not carry oxygen masks because scripture clearly forbids any sort of facial covering. All right, now, in the event of the rapture, our co-pilot Buck, who is unsaved, will take over the plane. <laughs> so, now, how many of you will be left behind? Okay, that's good, that's good. This is your pastor, Jimmy Bud Wheeler, in the cockpit. Here at Baptist Air, we fly by faith. It is prayer that keeps our plane aloft. We do not get filled up here because we know that if it's his will that we reach Nashville, then he will supply our needs. Amen, amen, amen. Somehow, with fuel or no fuel, we reached Nashville. Kind of a bumpy landing. I made my way to the Radio Hall of Fame where Mr. Peabody was waiting for me. Now, if you look around here, you see I'm organizing an exhibit of a memorabilia from radio variety shows. Uh -huh. and I understand you have one up there called the Ira Glass Show. No, I don't think that's uh, from up there, no. Ira Glass, the country singer? No, I don't, uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. Well, here, give a listen to this. Oh, okay, sure. So we're going to listen to the jingle, the rumble and the roar, <laughs> as this particular train glides along the woodlands, through the hills and by the shore. And we'll hear the mighty rush of her engine, and we'll also hear that lonesome hobo's call on our show today, we'll be traveling through the jungles on the train that people call the Wabash Cannonball. What do you think? I don't know. It uh, uh, you don't, uh, sounds familiar. I don't think I've heard it before. All right, all right. Uh, give this one a listen. There's another one here? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that when tears come down like fallen rain, you'll come around, you'll call my name and walk the floor. Just like I do, because your cheating heart will tell on you someday. And you'll crave the love that you threw away and act two, that's when you'll be blue, when your cheating heart tells on you. I don't know, I'm, uh, I'm not familiar with oh, him. Oh, well, so. uh, I'll tell you, it's kind of rare because, you know, nobody's writing cheating songs in Nashville anymore. What? No? No, no. Really? Country music has become guilt-free. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Country singers aren't religious anymore. They're spiritual, but they ain't religious. Uh -huh. so. uh, well, let me take you to hear some singers. You come along with me now. He took me to a little club called the Bluebird Cafe in a shopping center next to the Bonton Beauty Parlor. A number of black Lexi parked out front. Little club, 20 tables or so, 12 bar stools. Now, the, the, the big new trend in country music, Mr. Noir, is male fantasy. Uh -huh. Yeah, a man goes into a bar, orders a drink, and a woman comes up and throws herself at his feet. I don't know, sounds kind of adolescent to me. Or... Hey, here's where they put the show in chauvinistic. See, see what I'm saying? Now, look, here's an up-and-coming country star named Breck Brackett coming up oh, here to the microphone. He looks Give kind me. of old to be up-and-coming, no? Well, that's a big thing now. You know, guys hitting the big time in their 50s. Oh. All right, give them a listen now. Here we go. I order a PBR 
you get a Pinot Grigio. And though we've never met before, suddenly we're nose to nose, and you're taking off my clothes, and you say, make me yawn. Medicare turns me on. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. That's, uh, that's a hit song. Oh, that yeah, one? yeah. It's huge. Uh, went titanium last week. Oh, really? Now, look, here's another fella coming off here. This is Trent Trotter. He's a big star. This guy's a big star? You bet you. Burning up the charts. TV, big tours, flies around in a 737 with a revolving round bed. Give him a listen here. Looks like mm -hmm. a retired bank teller to me. That, that's the new trend in Nashville. All right, take it away there. She was a physical therapist from Memphis. And I was there for therapy. But suddenly she made me stop stretching and started to make love to me. She said, baby, I just can't help it. You're a CPA, OMG. And a guy with a paunch, he makes me raunchy and baldness is a turn on for me. So I'll light some candles, grab your love handles till our bonds Reach maturity. Oh, oh, I, uh, I always thought that uh, country music was about, uh, you know, hardcore reality and suffering and hard times. Oh, no, no, and... no, no. These guys, they never read the book of Job. No, uh -huh. they're all about wish fulfillment. But there's just they... something something unrealistic about young women throwing themselves at old guys. Well, old guys don't think so. Oh. Here, uh, give a listen to this fella here. He's a good one. Yeah, I was sitting in a bar on my fourth beer, just another lonely civil engineer. When this girl walks up in a tiny tank top, she said, oh, oh. I said, would you like me to test that tank top? to see if it can tolerate all that stress. She said, yeah. Oh, I will need to remove it and see if it meets state and local standards for tank top construction, I said to her. And she said, sure. Woo! I don't know. The crowd seemed to like it. And then I saw an old man get up on stage, an old man with a very long ponytail. It's kind of hard to believe, but it was him. He was there. I was down in Austin, Texas, drinking whiskey in a bar, when a woman slid in by me and said, what a stud you are. I realize you're 80 and those stairs are steep to climb, but I am a lady. Who likes to take her time. Thank you. I don't know. Wasn't much I could do for the Radio Hall of Fame. So I headed for the airport and Baptist Airline. I mean, maybe they fly on a wing and a prayer, but where else is the airfare a free will offering? And right there at the gate, I saw a man and a woman dressed in white. Hello, I'm Bishop Bliss Bradford of the True Branch Baptist of the Rapture, and this is my sister, Melissa Meshke. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, we're True Branch Baptists, mm. not to be confused with the blasphemous backsliding Baptists oh, yeah. bound for perdition, who are proto-Presbyterians, promulgating pernicious principles of permissiveness, pluralism, and post-millennialist poppycock. I see, so, so you are not post-millennialist. Oh, no, positively not, pre-millennialist, mm. according to the prophecy in the scripture. Right. We know by faith that the rapture will happen in New Hampshire. Uh -huh, it's right there in the Habakkuk and Haggai and Malachi, and I'd be glad to go over it with you if you have a minute right and now. And we hold with propitiation, not expiation, but propitiation. propitiation. Okay, good. So, so what, uh, what, what can I do for you? Well, well, I see that you're flying Baptist Airlines. 
Could you find it in your heart to make a love offering of, say, a thousand dollars towards a true branch Baptist podcast grasping the rapture? I don't, I, I'm sorry. Oh, well, how, how about $500? It would mean so much to us. I'm sorry, no. You see, with that donation, you'll receive a, a transistorized beacon to attach to your cap. So that as the rapture occurs, we will have you on our GPS screen. I know we are. I don't, I don't think so. so. So, so, you are one of them then? What? Those blasphemous Baptists? No, no, no. One no, of the no. sprinklers? No, no. So I boarded the plane and I couldn't help but notice a fuel truck parked under the wing with a hose running up to it. Evidently the company was under new management. People of faith but willing to take precautions. Probably Methodists. Anyway, when the basket came around, they put in what for me is kind of a large contribution, 50 bucks. I had earned nothing in Nashville, but I had gotten a certain confidence that even in my extremely late 60s, I, at least to some people, depending on the lighting, of course, I, I might be on the verge of irresistible. A dark night in a city that knows how to keep its secrets. But one man is still trying to find the answers to life's persistent questions. Guy Noir, Private Eye. Tim Russell, Sue Scott, and Mr. Fred Newman.